joy of editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, I'm working with the Nick Collection Analog Effects, and we're going to work with the uh, double exposure inside of Analog Effects. It's really fun and really creative, and here's just some examples of double exposure using Analog Effects. So without any further ado, let's get started. Well, let's have some fun with double exposure, and I have this cute image of a cat right here, then I have an image of a flower and an image of a city. I don't know if we'll be able to get to all these, but I'll try. But let's start out with the cat. Uh, he's on the background there. These are all just stock images, by the way. Um, I'm going to click on Filter, come down to Nick Collection, and launch Analog Effects Pro 2. When you're using uh, Nick software, it always remembers the uh, last adjustments you used, and the last thing I did was basic adjustments, okay? So let's go over here to Classic Camera, and we're just going to go down here and go to Build a Camera, Camera Kit. Now, I have that basic adjustments um, filter on here. I'm going to leave it on here just in case I need it. It's a good one to have. And I'm just going to simply find the double exposure. Click the little plus here and let's work with the double exposure. There are two different types of double exposures that you can do. One is using the actual image itself and just making a double exposure with that same image or else you can add another image on top of the image which is really what i'm going to show you today but just to show you, you can already see there's a little bit of see how the ears are shooting out from the cat ear and i can adjust the size of the second image which is the same as the first image but see how the cat just gets larger and then i can do things like adjust the, or rotate the strength of the zoom and see how i can make the ears go to the left or if i take it to the right I can make the ears go over to the right. So that's a basic double exposure. Now you can take this and you can move it around anywhere you want. But again, this tutorial is not about that today. This tutorial is about adding a secondary image on top of yours. But I'll do another tutorial on how you can do really cool effects using this technique. Okay, so how do you add a second image on top of your original image? All you need to do is come here, see where it says second exposure, and click the plus. And watch these controls change when I do this. I'll click the plus. Well, they don't change yet, but they will in a second after I pick another image. And so we have a cat here. So I thought, how about a fish? You know, cats like fish, right? So I'm going to click on this image right here. Click on open. And by the way, when you click, click that plus, it opens up your uh, file browser. So you just have to navigate the browser to the image that you want to use for your double exposure. So there it is. There's my second image on top. Now here's where the controls change right here. Now you'll notice here, I only have two sliders, exposure and exposure balance. Exposure balance would be, for instance, if I move this exposure to the right, you see the fish comes in. When I'm at 100%, all you see is the fish image. If I move it the whole way to the left, all you see is the cat image. It's very simple, right? And if you move the exposure balance, you're just, uh, you know, bringing those two images on top of each other. And you can go ahead and adjust it to where it looks just perfect for you. Okay, but that's just one thing you can do. Another thing you can do is adjust the exposure so you could lighten up the image or darken the image, whatever you like there. Or if you double click this, you'll send it back to the center of 50%. And the other thing that you can do is you can take uh, the image that you put on top of the original image. The original image was the cat. The fish is the... Uh, image I added, I can make that image larger. I can move it around by grabbing the center, center circle here and moving it like this. Maybe have my cat showing through and have my fish here. I can come out on the edge here and I can rotate the bowl. So you can do things like that. This other uh, button right here, believe it or not, does nothing, nothing when you're working with a second exposure. It only works when you're using uh, the same image to do the double exposure, if that makes any sense. Okay, so now I might say, you know what, I like it right there. And now I could come here to the exposure balance and say, do I, I want to let some more of that cat come through. So I'll move this exposure to the left and maybe something like that. And then I might say, you know what, I want that fishbowl bigger like this. You know, and this is where you have fun and you just play. And you're the artist and you want to create your image to look the way you want. And I might just angle this a little bit here something like that 
Okay, so I might say, you know what, that looks pretty cool. And it's just that simple. And when you're happy with it, all you have to do is click OK. But don't forget, you have all these other uh, filters over here. You can add light leaks, dirt and, dirt and scratches. You can add some frames. You can do different things. OK, so this is just the possibilities are limitless, like I said in my last analog effects video. But I just wanted you to see the real cool power of... Uh, double exposures. Now we're going to work in another image next. So if we like it, all we do is click OK and that sends us right back into Photoshop. And here we are in Photoshop. And one cool thing with, with the Nick collection too is uh, whenever you have an image and you send it into a Nick filter, uh, you don't have to make a duplicated background layer. It does that for you, which is really nice. But let's take a look. Here's the before. Really cool picture of a cat, right? And here's the after. But I love it. I think it's really cool. And I love double exposures. Now let's move to our next image. I'm going to use this. Actually, I told you that all the images were stock, but this is actually my own image here. Shot it with a very shallow depth of field. So let's work with this one. Let's go ahead and click filter and the Nick collection and we'll launch Analog Effects Pro and get started. If you'll recall, I said that when you're using Nick software, it always uses the filters from the last image that you processed. And as you can see here, there's my fish pole, right? Okay, so let's go to, you remember I had basic adjustments and double exposure. So let's click on double exposure and let's click X here and that gets rid of the fish bowl. And now we're gonna click the plus and now we can select another image to put on top of it. And on this one, I wanted to use, let's use this girl right here. All right, we'll put her here. Now she's gonna be in that same position, right? So I'm gonna move her down. This is going to be fun. Oh, I love this. Okay. Isn't that cool? Because she's holding a yellow flower and I'm just going to move her over. Now, remember, I can angle her here to any position that I would like. I can make her smaller, but I like her very big like this. And I might just, yeah, I think something like that. Now I can adjust my exposure, make it a little bit darker, a little bit lighter, whatever I want. If I want a more lighter feel, I can make it lighter you know, like a more airy openness, but, or, or darker, more subdued, something like that. And I might go right around here. I think it looks cool. And remember, I have the exposure balance. If I move it to the right, I'll see more of her. If I move it to the left, I'll see uh, more of the actual flower itself. So I just want to find the right balance. And I'm thinking this looks really nice. Now, I like that little bit of yellow on the right of our eye right here. I think it has a nice harmony to this image. And it's just that simple. And I'm happy with it. And let's go ahead and click OK. And that'll send us back into Photoshop. Let's go ahead and take a look at the before. Here's the before, just the flower. I love this flower image right here, by the way. And here's the after. But I love the double exposure with the girl. It's dreamy. It's, I don't know. It just looks really nice. And now on to the next image, which will be this uh, stock image of a cityscape. Well, let's uh, launch uh, the Nick Collection Analog Effects Pro 2 one final time. And we're done. Now here's our girl against a uh, city background. So again, it remembers the last set of filters that you use, but that looks really nice. I'm not going to use uh, the same girl. I'm going to use somebody else, but that's really cool. Now we can go in here and alter this if we wanted to use this, but let's go to double exposure and let's click X and let's find uh, another picture. Now I'm just going to click on the uh, plus key. We'll find another picture and this particular stock image right here. I like this girl right here. And wow, I love that just the way it is, but let's play with it. Let's work with her size. Let's make her a little, yeah, something like that. Maybe I'll pour up a little bit, get her eyes above the city. Do I, do I want the eyes above the city or below the city? Actually, I might want them right there. And of course, we can angle this. I like that little bit of an angle there. I think that looks good. And let's play with the exposure. We can lighten it up. We can darken it down. You know what? I think I'll darken it down a little bit. Now let's play with the exposure balance. Now if we move it to the right, we see the girl. If we move it to the left, we're going to get more of the city. So let's find a point where it really balances out right. And I like a lot of the girl. So we'll give a little more of the girl in with the city. I'm thinking right there. But now let's be creative. Let's go ahead and come over here and click on camera kit 
or build a camera and let's add some frames to this. And let's just get a little daring on this last one. Let's add some frames. And that frame looks good. I'm under film strip. Now this drop down menu here, uh, we have film strip, we have white and we have light box. So all these different uh, frames are under uh, film strip. Now, if I go to white, we have these frames. So let's just click on some of these and see if there's one we'd like. That's more like maybe a Polaroid or something like that. Let's try another one here. Basic. Okay, let's try. Let's try the film strip. The first one I liked a good bit. That was kind of fun. Let's go to this one. Let me find one. Yeah, you know what? I kind of like that one. Let's try one more here. I'm going to go with that one. Now we can go ahead with the scale and change the scale and change, you know, how wide that border is on there. So if I move it to the left, I narrow the border up. But I like these numbers like one, two, three, and that one, two over there. Let's make sure I get the entire 12 in there. Right to the edge. I think that looks good. I'm happy with that. We added a frame. Let's click OK. Send us right back into Photoshop. So we got the before and we got the after. Really like it. I love double exposure. You got to give it a try. Hey, please let me know what you think of double exposure in the comments section below. I know you can do this kind of stuff in Photoshop, but it's so much easier using analog effects. And analog effects does so much more than double exposure, as I showed you from the previous video where I showed you all the different presets. It's a really awesome creative program. Well, there you go. Double exposures using the Nick Collections Analog Effects Pro. I love this program. Let me know what you think. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. Happy New Year's and all that stuff. But until then, happy editing.